And after a few weeks of intense reflection on what it is that we were going to do for hurricane season this year, we have decided that Hello and welcome on board Polar Steel, where today we are doing a U-turn. Actually, we're gonna do two, two U-turns. But first, we're gonna go get a package that Ryan has been excited about for months. Maybe not months, weeks, but it's big. It's a big thing. So let's talk about that package, Ryan. Yeah. How long have you been waiting for it? About, uh, yeah, like one or two months, I think. Okay, and before that, how long had you been waiting for this? Well, one of the items I wasn't really like expecting ever. The other item I've been talking about since like, for like a year. Guys, things are about to change. Change drastically. We're on a little bit of a, a little bit of a time crunch here. Hi, Andy. Hey, good morning, guys. We gotta run. We gotta run. Run, 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 run. So the logistics center is closed at 12. It is just a little over 11. So Ren and I will divide and conquer. I'm gonna go rent a car. Ren's gonna go to the logistics center. We shall prevail. Yeah, we we really need a car for those packages because they're really big. So in the sailing life, you get very good at doing logistical stuff and going to places you would probably not go on vacation in a particular location. So here we are at the Logistics Center in Bonaire. I'm gonna go pick up some packages because they've been clearing customs for the last three days. What do we have here? Here comes Sophie. Oh, do you like our truck? <laughs> do you not like it? It's great! Yeah? It's very classy, it's a very classy truck. Oh, that's Christmas! <laughs> Is it heavy? Okay, why don't you put that down and let me get it. Can I help you somehow, Ryan? Yeah. Take a break, take a break. No, I have to admit that sometimes just filming is the perfect deflector for carrying heavy stuff. Not gonna lie here. Why don't you get in that back there first? <laughs> How about I drive and you hold the packages? I think it's better though if I come back because there's too much weight up in the front here. That's fine. It's Christmas! Yeah, she's really heavy. She's heavy. Uh. Okay, up, up, up. Push, push. Uh. 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 Nice. Good job. Go, baby. Okay. Go, baby. Yeah. Yes, it's in the boat! High five! And now is the moment that everything changes! Ah! 
that probably sounded very ridiculous. Uh, what are we opening first? Uh, Let's open this one. Very gross. Really? Is that how big it's gonna be, Ryan? Apparently. Oh my god. That is that is so big. What do you think it would be? <laughs> I don't know, not like that. This is huge. 48 volt, 96 amp hour, so it's 460 watt hours. Our per perspective, our battery bank on Polar Seal, our house bank is about 6,000 watt hours. So this one battery is like two thirds the size of our <laughs> house bank. I'm trying to make sure we don't, yeah, we don't want to cut anything. A couple of months ago, we discovered a leak in our dinghy. Now, it didn't really come as a surprise because the dinghy was almost six years old at this point and we knew that we needed to make dinghy chaps for the dinghy, which we never get around to make. Oh my God, he looks, look at her, he looks so sad. She is such a sad dinghy right now. But we're really bummed out because we love our Taka Cat. It is seriously an awesome dinghy. And apparently Taka Cat USA watched that video because they called us and they were like, guys, this is not good. Let us send you a new dinghy. And on top of that, they sent us a bunch of accessories that they're currently developing for the Taka Cat line. You don't, it's like small things, but like a pump, a good pump on a boat is really important. Look, Ryan, the, the package says R plus yeah. S. I saw that. that is so sweet. Okay, so here we are with our new toy. It's our new Taka Cat 300. So it's two bags, some directions which I think we'll need. This is like the accessory bag, and uh, this is a fun surprise for later. Wait, here's a seat. Here's a pump, here's a second pump. That pump, that little thing right here, I am excited about that. <laughs> the Taka Cat that we received is a little bit different than the one that we own. It has an open bow and an open transom, which makes it a lot more compact. We received a tiny little pump, as well as a big hand pump, which apparently is the best hand pump that Ryan has ever seen, and dinghy chaps. I am honestly so impressed with that little tiny orange pump. It's like, it's totally working. Look at how small that thing is. It's so tiny. Go baby, go. Let's see if I can catch it. So thank you so much, Steve and Casey from Takakat. You guys are such a cool company and we love the boats that you do. We can't wait to try this one. And also mega thank you to Willem and Annette, our good friends from Catamaran Supply, who are a distributor of Takakat. They're really cool. Now we have big plans for this dinghy. And if you've noticed this big battery that we received in almost the same package, yes, yes, that's a hit. One of the reasons why we love our Taka Cat is because it is a catamaran dinghy and its floor is elevated above the water. It makes the dinghy more stable, but it also decreases drag, making it a great boat for our electric motor. But while we love our electric setup that takes us across anchorages at 3 to 4 knots, we have felt for a while that we wanted to go a little bit faster. So we did a thing. Oh baby! Oh my god. Okay, Ryan, I have to admit to you that I am a little, I am very, very excited. I'm also a little scared. Whoa. Whoa. That prop is so much bigger than the one we have. Oh my god, Ryan. That's right, this is a new torpedo, but it's not whatever new torpedo, it is a nine horsepower torpedo. A little more heavy than our old one, but it's not much more heavy. It's just a little awkward to get out. Whoa! Yeah. Look at, look at her, she shines. 
So we got this new Torquedo. It is nine horsepower, and it's a little bit different than the one we currently have. First off, it weighs a little bit more, it's faster, and it has an external battery, so it doesn't have the battery sitting on top. We'll have it inside the boat. Torquedo sells their own battery, but you can also use these with third-party batteries. So for us, we are going to use it with a 48-volt Dakota lithium battery because, uh, well, we can get those a bit easier. I am equal part excited and scared. <laughs> At the time we are recording this video, we are still waiting on two critical parts to make our new dinghy setup work. A Pelican waterproof case for the battery and an anti-ventilation plate for the prop. But Ryan couldn't wait, so we tried the new Torquedo and Takakat yesterday and the results are already promising. At a third of its power, we were doing 7 knots, which is twice as fast as we normally go in our old thingy. It is also completely silent, and we can't wait to share with you everything about our new 10 horsepower electric thingy. Now, we've been staying in Bonaire for almost four months, and it has a lot of advantages, like we could receive a new dinghy, which takes weeks to arrive, and normally, because we're hopping between different destinations, it never works. We love Bonaire. It is such a wonderful island. We have done so many fun things here. We've had an amazing time, but... Our visas are about to expire. Uh, as a matter of fact, as I am recording this, our visa have expired and we are applying for an extension. We have an appointment in a couple of weeks. Hopefully our extensions get approved, otherwise we will have to pay a fine. Not super fun, but point is, it is time for us to go. When we moved on board Polar Serial three years ago, and yes, exactly three years ago, I can't believe how fast time is flying. Ryan and I never really considered ourselves to be the type of people that would take the boat to one place and just stay there. And don't get me wrong, we love the tropics, the palm trees and the sun and the beaches, it's absolutely wonderful, but we crave adventure. And at the time I am recording this video, it has been 12 months since our last passage. That's right, one year zero sailing. To be perfectly honest with you, in the last 12 months, there has been so many times where I or Ryan questioned if we should even continue to sail. When we left St. Martin last year after what was probably the three worst months of our entire sailing adventure, a really good friend of ours on another boat told me that she wasn't sure that I would be coming back to the boat. And at that time, I agreed with her. But then after five months of living the apartment life back in our hometown of Stockholm, we found ourselves craving the boat again and craving the adventure. And we hit another roadblock, which was this aborted Atlantic crossing on a motor yacht that was gonna take us all the way back to Curacao, which was another pretty low point in this adventure. And again, I question why are we forcing this? Is this meant to happen? Like, why are we even trying? And then we arrived in Bonaire and we started to feel a sliver of hope when we had so many good friends around us and, you know, life in Bonaire was almost normal. But immediately found ourselves on lockdown again with very strict restrictions, although better than the year before in St. Martin. And through the seven weeks that we were on lockdown on the boat, I again asked if we shouldn't just put the boat on the hard, fly back to Europe and just let the COVID-19 pandemic run its course until we maybe would go back on the boat. But while we hit a lot of hardship this last year, as I am sure you did too, there were also a whole bunch of beautiful little things that happened and, and that gave us hope. For one, in the last five months, our little YouTube channel grew the most that it's ever grown before, which is mind-blowing considered that we have done zero sailing. So um, thank you guys for sticking around through these hard times. You guys have a gift to always be here in our lowest moments and it really means a lot to us. Thank you. The second beautiful thing that happened is that as I am recording this video, it has been two weeks since we received our second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, making us fully vaccinated people. I seriously cried of joy and relief when I received this injection. Life-changing. 
But here is how we believe that this COVID-19 pandemic impacted us in the most meaningful way. Before the pandemic, Ryan and I didn't really realize how much we love our life, how much we love living on our boat and how much we love the adventure that comes with it. And it is that love for our boat and the adventure that pushed us through all of those hardships that we had to go through this last year. The second thing that we realized is how much we love offshore sailing. And originally, we really wanted to go to Canada. Canada was our number one destination to escape hurricane season this year. But because COVID-19 is still a reality, unfortunately, it doesn't look like Canada will be opening its border to pleasure crafts in a time that allows us to escape hurricane season. And after a few weeks of intense reflection on what it is that we were going to do for hurricane season this year, we have decided that I'm actually gonna let Ryan tell you that. Let's go get Ryan. Hi, camera. Okay, Ryan, where are we going for hurricane season 2021? We're going northeast to the Azores. Azores for the summer, Madeira for the fall, Canaries for the fall winter, and then back here to the Caribbean. So yes, you heard that right. This year, we are not crossing the Atlantic once, but twice. We are calling this plan going from Bonaire to Grenada on a beam reach, because we can. Another word that I found to describe this plan uh, comes from our friends from World Towning, a US family that bought a catamaran in France, and they describe the act of traveling these days as revenge traveling. And this plan, this 7,000 nautical mile journey that we are about to take on, we're calling it revenge sailing. Seriously though, we are super, super excited at the idea to finally go offshore again, to reconnect with what we love about our lifestyle. We cannot wait to explore the Azores, Madeira, and some more Canary Islands over the summer and the fall before taking on a second Atlantic crossing from east to west in the winter of 2021. We will be doing things a lot differently this time than we did the first time around. Not that the first time around went particularly bad, but we just want to have different experiences this time. So one of the things that we will be doing is to take on some crew. Stay tuned for more details. Our departure is set in less than three weeks now. We have been spending the last few weeks preparing Polar Seal to take on some of the biggest passages that she's ever done. This is a new chapter in our sailing adventure and it begins now. <laughs> <laughs>